Hey Grips here. If you're beginning with color grading or color correction, stick around. I'm going to show you how to do color corrections using your vector scopes and color grading using your LUTs table. So stick around. Okay, now before I begin, let me quickly explain the difference between color correction and color grading. So color correction is making sure that all your colors, red, blues, and greens, which is your primary colors, and your skin tone is in the right range. And we do that by using vector scopes in the waveform. Now, when color grading is where you add your personalized style to it. So if you want that matrix look, then we can start playing with LUTs and also into the US saturation to get that specific look that you're after. Always start with color correction first. So you need to remember one thing. Just because it looks good on your monitor, it may not look good on my monitor. The Kelvin on my monitor may be different to yours. I may have a setup more warmer and you may have a setup more colder. So when you finish your video and you upload it to YouTube, it may look different on my monitor. But by using things like a vector scope and waveforms, we take the guesswork out. It's going to be universal across all platforms. This goes without saying, hopefully even before you bring the footage into your timeline or into your software, try and do your level best to get the skin tones correct by using proper lighting. And with, that, we, with that being said, let's go. So I'm going to double click and then go for the color tab. It, this may look daunting, but it's very, very simple to actually understand. So color tab. Okay, so first off, I've got the waveform, but I'm going to change it by using the vector scope okay so the vector scope so this little diagram here represents your primary colors and your secondary colors so here here is a very simple uh, outline red magenta blue cyan green and yellow your primary colors is your red your blues and your greens and your secondary is yellow secondary really secondary <laughs> yellow magenta and cyan your skin color lies between the yellows and the reds so this line here on your vector scope represents your skin tone so ideally you want your skin tone to be on this line here and with that with that little bit of knowledge you can already start pushing your colors towards that line and you can do it multiple ways you can use the UN saturation your tone curve and the color wheels I won't go into super detail because you will get inundated and then get confused let's so let's stick with the basics first off I would suggest go to the white balance check it and let it run on auto it's going to do a much better job than your eye ever will I've never done anything else but use auto and then the second thing is I go to the color wheel and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the waveform. So here we have in the waveform. And this gives me a really good spread of what my colors are doing. So 0 represents black. 100 represents white. And then everything in between is my, is my colors. Now, if I had to look at this uh, color wheels, color shift is basically the masters. If I move this, it controls all of them. This is my grays. This is my blacks. And this is my whites. We stay within 100 and 0. Anything that goes beyond 100 is called clipping. In other words, you're going to lose information. If I was to concentrate on the monitor behind me, that's completely clipped out. I see no more detail in that. But the footage that I made was done on purpose to create the Bokker effect. Now, if I have it all in black, what would happen is I could not see the creases in my shirt. It would be completely washed out. And this is not a good look. We can change little things like if I want to increase or decrease the blacks I would use the shadows like so see now as you can see the more I decrease it the less I see detail in my shirt so that's not the look I'm after so we want to stay everything as much as possible within the 0 and 100 next thing I would do is go into the tone curves and this is where I prefer to play with more than anything else I'm going to go back into the vector scope okay now here's something you want to also think about you've got an inner circle and an outer circle these brackets around the colors basically represents the upper limit you want to push that color so once you hit that bracket or go beyond it again you're going to start losing detail you're back into clipping so my suggestion is try and keep your colors as much as possible within this circle so i'm pretty close 
and I can still make a few more adjustments. To use this graph or the tone curve, the outer point here represents the whites and the outer point here represents the blacks. Everything in between is again your red, your greens and your blues. If I wanted to decrease or increase this, I would start pushing the whites or the blacks towards the color that I want. So let's say I want to push a little bit more towards the green or the reds. All right, so you can see the vector scope is actually now pushing more towards the blues and the cyan. If I did it, oh, let's reset that. If I want to do the opposite, I can also do push the blacks more towards the reds. Now you watch, my skin tone starts to get really, really red. Let's reset that. Here's a little tip for you. Try and make small adjustments. Don't go too, too fast because it is a very sensitive vector or very sensitive how it works. So I would just move it a little bit. If you're familiar with uh, the tone curve, then you also know about the S pattern. In other words, you can click a node here, you can click a node here, and you can click a node here or anywhere on that line. And then you can make individual adjustments if you want. But again, this is much more advanced. I'm literally trying to teach you the basics. Now, let's say you've got multiple footages coming in. How are you going to keep it consistent? Very simple. Let's say I make a slight adjustment here. So I got that little bit of a green look to it. What I can do now is save it. I can save this as a preset. Once you have multiple footages into your timeline, timeline, all you need to do is, is apply the preset. So I did one here called test. I'm going to cancel this because I've already saved it. So if I go now into my customs, you'll see test here. I click it once and it's going to make it the adjustment that I need it for my footage. Okay, so I'm very happy with this. Now that I have got exactly what I want, I'm now going to stylize it. And this is where the LUTs come into. The hard part is done. That's the color correction. The easy part is now stylizing. In other words, what look or what feeling are you trying to get across? So Video Studio does have its own LUTs. Now LUTs represents look up table. And if you go on the internet, you can actually see a table of all numbers. So you, again, it represents your primary colors, your red, greens, and blues. And what it does, it assigns a number. And basically, a LUT is somebody who's actually done that for you. So if you want to, say, have a cinematic look to it, we can look for something. Let's try the Neo. If I apply the Neo, so I dropped a little bit of colors, I can naturally boost my colors. Now, the only thing you need to do is click it. That's all you need to do. You do not need to click and drag it and put it on the footage. This little tick represents that it has been applied already. So let's do another one. Let's go McKinnon. So whatever look that you're after, this is what you can do. Now, you don't need to use just the Video Studio. You can actually import your own LUT as well. And it's very simple to do. You can basically click this here, import a LUT profile. So I've done that already. I've created my own profile called My LUTs. So there you go. You can create a folder on your desktop and import all your LUTs. I'm going to show you one one that you can actually use. Let me drag this one across. Let's go into the cinematic. These are free. So there's quite a lot of these ones free on the internet. So you can go to this, the, this website called Fix the Photo and you can download all these LUTs, put it into your folder. And then all you need to do is press this icon here, add folder, and then look to where the folder is hosted on your system. And then you've got more abilities or different choices to play around. Now I've already done all that. So as you can see, I have quite a few LUTs already stored in. So that basically is how LUTs work. Now let's say for instance, you add something, you like the look, so click once, not double click, sorry. You like the look, but it's just a little bit too strong. Fear not, we can adjust that as well. We can go to the top and then we can change the intensity. So if I was to go 100%, you can see like it's way too overpowering. So I'm going to reduce that and just ever so slightly, maybe get that where I had it at 36%. So you can decrease the intensity if you wish. Now, once you have all this, you can still go back into these ones and make slight adjustments. So as you can see on this footage, 
I've gone to the point where I'm pushing my luck. So I would need to go into the color wheel and make a slight adjustment there to, con to control that. So there you go. And that, my friend, is the basic intro on how to use these LUTs color wheels or the vector scope and the waveform. I will make more advanced tutorials, but this will get you started to make your footage look better. And as always, thanks for watching.